Welcome to the most listened to golf in the world, the Fairways of Life show, on air, online, and around the world, with the most candid interviews, unforgettable stories, taking you beyond the ropes. Here's your host, New York Times best-selling author, Matt Adams. What's going on, folks? Welcome into the Fairways of Life show. We are going through, we're pouring through stuff right now that is relative to Masters. And what I'm talking about is what are the key areas that you would look at to say, okay, I'm trying to determine who I think will be my favorite for this Masters. How does it compare to what they've done in the past, which is difficult because when we're looking at the stats, which I can do with the PGA Tour, where do I go to try to get a sense of where players are that are on live, right, to do a comparison. And then it's really interesting because when you do a comparison, I'll give you one example of what I'm talking about, strokes gain approach. Scotty Scheffler's number one in the category. It's an interesting category. This is, this is current. Scotty Scheffler's number one. Shane Lowry's number three. I'm just jumping around a little bit. Uh, Justin Thomas is number five. Nick Taylor is 14. Right? And then I look at, I go, okay, well, where do I go to make sure I get a stat based on the same criteria that was before guys started leaving for live to compare? So first one I went to was 21-22, right? Brooks Kepka is Brooks Kepka. He was 132nd. He's an outlier because he does incredible things in majors. In 21-22, number one in that category is Will Zalatoris. Number three, Colin Morikawa. Number five is Cam Smith. 38, for example, was John Rahm. Last year, same criteria, strokes gain approach, John Rahm was fourth. So it's it seems like it's it's a question of, do we take a look at areas where players are exceptional? And, and let me just go through some of them with you. You, get, you guys watch these graphics that Andrew has built this morning. You'll see what I'm talking about. Strokes gain approach on your screen. Scotty Scheffler, as I mentioned, is number one. You can see Shane Lowry is there as number three. Justin Thomas is number five. I'm jumping around a little bit, but you can see some big names starting to jump out, right? There's Will Zaltoris at number nine. I mentioned that he was number one in 21-22. And in, in fairness, when I look at 21-22 or even I look at last year, it's, it's in the balance of the full year and not relative to where we are right now, which obviously current numbers would be. Greens and regulation, which I think greens and regulation is the most important stat. At Augusta National. If you're looking for a stat to say, give me, give me an idea, give me a trend. Oh, look who's number one. 76%. Again, because we don't have a full picture of the world of golf, but the picture that I do have, Scotty Scheffler's number one at 76%. It's really interesting because when you look at the rest of even the top 10, you look at it and it goes huge gaps of players that are not in the Masters, which makes you realize that when you're comparing the Masters, when you're comparing Augusta National to the season on the PGA Tour as yet, it is not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. Because the most important stat, in my view, is clearly not the most important stat on the PGA Tour, even though those names listed are having good seasons. Save for Scotty Scheffler, where you can look at it and go, well, that makes sense. All right, strokes gain putting. Kind of a no-brainer, right? Look at the list. Look at number five that jumps out there. Matthew Pavone. Came to the PGA Tour. Got his promotion through the DP World Tour, formerly known as European Tour. Promptly came over here and has won. Look at number six, Jordan Spieth. If I do that same comparison, Jordan Spieth, number six, strokes gained putting. In that 21-22 season, which again, I told you I went back to to try to grab other names for comparison. For example, 21-22, John Rahm was 28th. Jordan Spieth was 155th ranked in 21-22. Last year, he was 79th. 
there's a lot of interesting stuff here. Uh, Andrew, you just leave this up here for a second as we, as we go through some of these numbers with strokes gained putting. This year, strokes gained putting. I hear a lot of people online talking about Xander, Xander Shoffley. Well, when it comes to putting, Xander is off the boil. Last year, he was fifth, fifth in strokes gained putting. Currently, he's 80th. That's not horrific, but it's not even average. Right? Rory in 21-22 was 16th because there's all the talk about coming in. The storylines, Rory McIlroy is going for the career grand slam. He was 16th in 21-22. Last year, he was 65th. This year, he's 94th. Right? There's a lot of debates. I saw, I've seen it online, too, where people are saying, well, Rory's not in form. And other people say, what do you mean he's not in form? But in that one critical category, he's going in the wrong direction, in fairness. Jordan, again, to go back and tell you he's six, just to reiterate, 155th in 21-22 and 79th last year. Scotty Scheffler, that just, he's the anomaly in all of this, too, in this category. He was 162nd last year, which goes back to that same theory that I have that currently the world of golf that we live in is a ball striking for dough and putt for show because what these great ball strikers need to do in my view is have a week with the putter and it doesn't have to be a great week. A lot of times it does it, which is interesting. They lead in strokes gain putting or they're amongst the leaders in strokes gain putting when the rest of the year, they're nowhere in sight. Scotty right now, strokes gain putting, as we speak, is 99th. But clearly, again, you have to look at that and go, okay, that 99th is based upon an average of everything he's done to this point instead of looking at it, say, over the last three events. Current form, because current form is a, is a consideration for the Masters. Experience is a consideration for the Masters. The average starts at the Masters for a winner is six. Right? Really interesting numbers. Okay, another, I think, critical stat, particularly around Augusta National and, and where you have a lot of these really tight little lies. Strokes gained scrambling. Again, maybe there's no surprise here. Look who's number 10. Scotty Scheffler. Shane Lowry's number 11. Victor Hovland, a lot of people talking about Victor Hovland, rightfully so, with his record at Augusta National, 71st in that category. Xander, 74th. Eh. Will Zalatoris is 80th. Scotty Scheffler, strokes gain, scrambling is 156. Before you scratch him off your list, he's leading in greens and regulation, strokes gain approach. Of course he's got to be higher in, in scrambling. Right? Because he's hitting the greens all the time. So he's, you know, 21 22, because I did that comparison, this is one of the first places where Brooks popped up. Scrambles like crazy. Justin Thomas was fifth. Tony Finau was sixth. Matt Fitzpatrick was seventh. This is 21 22 in this same category. John Rahm was 110th. Right? So what we tried to do when we when we're, I was I was going through all these numbers last night coming into today. And so as I'm putting these different categories together, now you could add more categories to it. You could definitely add more categories to it. Like for example, I think total driving would be a be a category that we easily could add. So, but what we did do, because, because we went deep into these specific categories, greens and regulation, strokes gain approach, strokes gain putting, 50 to uh, 125 yards. I haven't even had a chance to talk to you about that yet. And scrambling. Before I give you the, 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 uh, the averages, and thus, based upon performance, and in this case, based upon recent form, they, both, they all fit. Let me talk to you about 50 to 125 yards. 50 to 125 yards. Scotty Scheffler, 
again, probably the shock of no one, is leading at 13 feet, one inch. Max Holmes number four. JT's number nine. Tony Finau's 20th. Shane Lowry's 93rd. Rory's 101st in that category, 101. Will Zaltoris is 123rd. In 21-22, again, my efforts to find leaders so I could say, well, here's a few guys that I can't, I can't judge because they're, they're playing live. I, I picked up through the first 15, I JT, Morikawa, Xander, and Jordan Spieth. I didn't have anybody in like a remarkable position, which shows you the, the nuance of human beings and also major championship golf. In 22-23, last year, Morikawa was second. Scotty Scheffler was fifth, consistency there. Homa, who's this year fourth, was 16th. And Rory, who's 101st, last year was 18th. Draw from that what you will. Because it's interesting, because if you look at what we're talking about now, I don't feel great about Rory McIlroy based upon key performance areas relative to current form. Now, he's playing this week. If everything switches and he finds it, yeah, that's when these stats you throw out the window because the only thing that matters is what you're doing right now. The averages don't mean much, but coming in, the averages mean everything. So with that said, I'll give you three in reverse order, I'll go three, two, one. I'll give you three that I think are worth keeping an eye on. But Dom's got a question for me first. Dom, what do you got? Well, it's not a question. I, w- I want you to go over that list. I, I, I've been scrambling as well, going over some stuff. My laptop is in front of me. And I, I know the list. I believe I know the list you're going to go through, and I think I have a name to add to that list. So go ahead. Oh, my three, two, one, you want to put a fourth in there? Yeah, but my fourth is actually going to be in the second slot. I like that. Okay, so let me let me go through three that that have already identified. Dom's going to throw one in here. The reason I was laughing is is Dom so classic because I'll be in the middle of a sentence and in my in my earpiece I'll hear mad mad mad. I'm like, what is place on fire? What's going on, Dom? I got a new name I want to add to. All right, with an average of forty six. Matthew Pavone, right? 35th in greens and regulation, 24th strokes gain approach, 5th in putting, 101st in 50 to 125, get it, understand, 68th in scrambling. What weighs against Matthew Pavone? He's got the current form. He's got a lot of good things experience at Augusta National. All right. From there, and these last two aren't going to shock that I'm going to give you, but then Dom's going to wedge one in here in just a second. Wyndham Clark. Weighted average 35th. 13th in greens and regulation. Again, to me, greens and regulation are the most important stat that we have. 31st in strokes gain approach. 12th in putting, 18th in 50 to 125, and scrambling, he's, he's outside of the top 100. So that's why his average got pulled up. And then the number one for me with this list, and again, we've got another one coming at you in just a second. Scotty Scheffler at 22.4, one in greens and regulation, one in strokes gain approach, 99th in strokes gain putting, but again, current form would suggest otherwise because there's all these little caveats you have to pull in. A one in 50 to 125, 10 in scrambling. And Dom, who do you got to, to wedge in there? I'm going to give you I'm going to give you their order. 29th, 35th, 57th, 17th, and 29th. So nothing that's a massive, massive weakness for a number that is 33.4, which is higher than Wyndham Clark's number. Yep. But he's got the Matthew Pavone problem of the no experience. Lud- Ludwig Oberg. Okay. Well, if he were to do it, you're talking about a guy doing something absolutely historic, too. 
But that's a really good pick. I'm going to write that down. You got to write that down. You write that down. <laughs> Ludwig Obra. Okay, guys, what do you think? Dom, did you do a question of the day? I did do a question of the day. It's a very complex question. You want me to read it? Uh, no, I want you to send it to us from telepathy and as we fade to break. The, the question of the day is, who will win the Masters? That's the question of the day. What are you getting back? And it's a write-in. So we've got, well, I, I'm going to try and collect some names here because there's people firing in from all over the place, just throwing one name after another. So I'm going to try and make it make like a, a spreadsheet where I know how many people picked how many people. And then at the end of the show, we can see where we're at here. Oh, that's it. That's all you're going to give us. Okay, which means we're not, we're not going to give you right. any specific names right now. We'll get back to you on that. When that's we correct. get back to yeah. all of you, I've got a special guest uh, waiting in the wings, a voice that's important for us to hear from right now for a whole variety of different reasons, not the least of which is what can benefit you. I'll give you the details when we come back. No doubt there will be a pick relative to the Masters thrown in there as well. The Augusta National Women's Amateur starts today. That coverage coming up on Golf Channel. Look forward to that, uh, not only for its own merit and the excitement, but as we get into uh, the final round, it gives us a little glimpse of Augusta National. Uh, again, another preview, perhaps, of what lies in store. Amongst that, the weather for coming up at Augusta and more this week, the Valero Texas Open. Really good field at the Valero Texas Open. So we have much to cover with all of you as the Fairways of Life show continues, including hearing from Nellie Corda on today's show. That lies in store. The Fairways of Life show is presented by the PGA Tour Superstore. They are the number one golf retailer from coast to coast. Why? They're big, beautiful stores. Yeah, you better believe it. But I believe it's because of their people. You're actually shopping with the pros, people vested in your best interest. Check them out at your happy place. Relax. Easy now. Find your happy place. It's all in the hips. Just tap it in. Yes! Find the latest clubs and apparel at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses. All set alongside world-famous scenery and visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. It screams. It tracks. It's soft. It reacts. It is the Bridgestone Tour B with a game-changing reactive cover designed to spring faster off your driver and stick longer to your wedges. Try Bridgestone's Tour Bs. The Tour Ball reinvented. The Gen 6 Iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team. The absolute best golf club I have ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 Iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're going to love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball? Nah. Football? Done it. I think I'm going to go after the PGA Tour. Bo, you're going to need the right equipment company. I think I got that. You know Tour Edge backs all their clubs with a lifetime warranty. I know. They ship all their premium custom clubs in 48 hours. I know. All their premium clubs are hand-built in the USA. I know. You know Tour Edge has won 35 times out here. Guys, I know. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern lower peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boynegolf.com. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
As we welcome you back to the Fairways of Life show, pleasure to have your company, folks. Dan Murphy is the president and CEO of Bridgestone Golf, a member of the Fairways of Life family. Uh, Dan, you guys came out with this new concept called Mindset with the golf balls. And, and I'm curious about the success that you're having in making people understand that through the mind, through preparation, through visualization, through execution, that can be tied in directly to the graphics that you have on this golf ball. Could you take us through the genesis of that concept? Yeah, sure. Hey, Matt, so good to be on Fairways of Life. Good to see nice. you, buddy. Um, yeah, Mindset is a new launch that we've, uh, we've, we've just started this year, and we're really excited about it. And what we learned was, as we look back on our career and what happened on on tour over the last 30 years, you think back on it, the 90s was the decade of equipment. It got bigger, it got better, it, it was fitted, and, and that trickled down to consumers. And we all are now typically fitted for, for our golf equipment. The next big wave that we saw happen on tour was fitness. Tiger came on the scene and he made, he made golfers athletes. And every, all of us, including myself, try to stay as fit as we can so we can play good golf. And what we're seeing now on tour that has not yet come down to the consumer level is mindfulness. And that's where we thought that there was a real opportunity and for, for, for players and for ourselves, frankly, to introduce the mindset technology. And mindset basically is, is a three-step process to, to help you clear your mind, have a process, and hit the ball better and more consistently. Um, the first step in that is to identify your target. It's represented by a, a red circle on the, on the golf ball. The second step is to visualize your shot path. And then the third is just to clear your mind, focus on a green dot, and, and hit the ball. And what we've done is uh, we teamed up with Jason Day. He's been, mm -hmm. as you guys know, as golf fans, Jason is a, um, a real advocate and a real disciplined guy when it comes to, to focusing his energy and, and hitting the golf ball properly. He visualizes a shot. We got with him and, and it really matched with what we were working on. And he has a coach uh, named Jason Goldsmith. And we got with those two guys and we said, hey, here's an idea. We want to get in, into the visual uh, technology on a golf ball and we want to do something really cool. And he said, that's great because I'm doing something. And, and this new mindset technology allows him to stay focused, uh, gives him a discipline on every shot. And, uh, you know, you asked in the beginning, Matt, it, it, how's it going? And the best part about it is it's, it's going really well. We launched it at the PGA show in January. We shipped it in February. And so we're seeing sell through at, at retail and things are perking along for us. Awesome stuff. You guys revolutionized the golf ball industry when you started to do mass fittings. Your message to golfers everywhere was not every golf ball fits every single golfer. Make sure you play a ball that's right for you and right for your game. It fundamentally changed the industry. And, and if you want evidence of that, folks, recognize that companies that previously had been of a mindset to go, no, you don't need to get fit. Just play ours. Ours is, is, is the best you can get. And instead, everybody's now embracing and going, yeah, getting fit really does work. So let me get an update from you, if I, if I can, uh, president of uh, Bridgestone Golf, Dan Murphy. Where are you at with fitting now that you, I know you still could do it in person? I know you, got, you guys could do it online. It continues to expand. It continues to make an impact. Yeah, it goes all the way back to 2008 and we started ball fitting. We realized that there was a real truth that needed to be told in the industry, and that was that there's not a one-size-fits-all golf ball for everybody you know we all wear different size shirts double x for me and maybe uh, a size 12 shoe and that doesn't necessarily fit everybody nor does the same golf ball fit everybody's game and so we popularized ball fitting and it really uh, through the years has has separated us from the competition uh, we continue to be the number one ball fitter in golf uh, this year we're we're relaunching live ball fittings we're going out into the field with teams of guys all across america and offering, <clears throat> offering ball fitting to individual consumers. So we're super excited about that. Um, you know, ball fitting continues to be a real central part about what we're doing and, and getting the right golf ball, particularly as we saw golf expand over the last couple of years, right? We had a, not, a lot of new players come during the pandemic. 
and getting them into the proper equipment and the proper golf ball that's going to give them the best amount of success, we think, is is the way to keep them involved. And that's really the goal of all of us. There's a lot of noise in the industry, Dan, uh, as as you well know. And I think part of the message from Bridgestone that deserves to be heightened and, and known far more so than it currently is, in fairness, is the amount of technology that you continue to impart into your golf balls. Uh, so I guess the first question I would have there is, how do you do it? How, how do you guys continue to innovate such as you do time and time again? And what can all of us know better about the technology that's inherent in these golf balls? Yeah, well, the 2024 B, it's a launch year for us, the 2024 Tour B uh, is an exciting year for us. And uh, like we talked about technology on the outside with the mindset technology, there's new technology on the inside as well. And one of the reasons uh, that we separate ourselves and we think we create the, the best golf ball in the world is we really get input from our pros, like Tiger, for example, is on our staff. And Tiger is a great resource for our R&D group. He really helps us tune into to what works for his game and what what he's doing. And so Tiger really helps us a lot. And this year's golf ball features a, a, a new generation of cover and mantle. Um, we popularized and, and launched a, a smart cover technology. It's really kind of crazy, Matt, that the, the, the material science that goes into our golf ball, similar to what goes into our tires as Bridgestone Tire, uh, is really quite amazing. This is a smart material, but basically gets firm when you want it firm, which is on a driver shot, so the ball goes a long way, but it stays soft when you want it soft, which is on a wedge shot, so you have control and spin. And so, as to, you know, to put put it into Tiger's words, it's it's the holy grail of golf balls. It's longer off the tee, and it's, it's still soft around the green. And you know, ball fitting is something that we popularize for consumers, but it also works for guys like Tiger Woods. He changed his golf ball this year. He he used to play our XS, which was a higher spinning. Uh, firmer golf ball. And uh, he changed this year to the new Torby X. And he did that because his game's changing, his needs change, and we want to change along with him. And you know, we, we encourage not only pros to get ball fit, but also consumers. Well, let me tap into that for a second, uh, Dan, because I know you stay very much in touch with your brand ambassadors, and we don't know what's going on with Tiger. We won't know for a few more days until uh, he gets a chance to address the media. What are you hearing from Tiger Woods? How's he feeling? How Do you have any idea how his form is? Well, I can't speak for him, obviously, uh, but we're hopeful and, and quite frankly expect that he'll be in Augusta next week, and, uh, you know, we... We read the news reports like you you do. I, you know, maybe he was there, maybe he wasn't. We don't know. Uh, practicing up, but uh, we're super excited about next week. We know that uh, I can tell you this for sure. He wants to be there. He wants to play well. Uh, he wants to get that ne next major, and we firmly believe he's capable and ready to do that. So we're we're excited for next week. It's going to be a great week. Speaking of Tiger, uh, you a few years ago in, in 2019, if you recall, <laughs> we were live on the air on Golf Channel and you picked him to win uh, months and months in advance. And of course, he, he won epically that year at Augusta National. So can I tap into uh, the crystal ball of Dan Murphy at this point? Who is going to win the 2024 Masters? Wow. Um, well, of course, I'm going to say Tiger Woods uh, in a playoff with Jason Day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i remember that time it was it was the 2019 pga show and you you put me on the spot and i called it right so that's the pinnacle of my uh my my tv appearances with you so that that was a it was a great moment well i hope you told tiger about that when you picked him back then uh, <laughs> i actually do think I think Jason Day has got a very good shot to be in the mix this year based upon we were just going through all kinds of statistical data and otherwise before you were coming in. Uh, before we move off to golf balls, because I want to ask you a couple of industry questions, have someone of your stature on the show. Uh, I want to I want to ask you about price points because we talk so much about technology, rightfully so, because it's it's fascinating. But a lot of people also walk into a golf shop and the first thing they do is they're going to go for a price point. Uh, how about the variety of offerings that Bridgestone has in golf balls? Well, I think we've got something for everybody. Again, we Bridgestone is certainly about the pros and making great golf balls for Tiger Woods and Jason Day and Fred Couples and others. But we've always been focused on the recreational player and making sure that they get the ball that's right for their game. And not only does that mean a technology solution, but also a price point solution that fits 
what they're expecting and what they want to do. So we've got golf balls across the spectrum, starting with our Tour B. Um, we've held price where others have gone up. Uh, we want to provide a value to consumers. So we're, we're our typical shelf price is forty nine ninety nine on on the Tour Bs, and then you you jump down to our E series, which is more of our popular price product, starting at thirty four ninety nine with the the E twelve all the way down to E six at twenty four ninety nine. So we're um, you know, we, we've got something for everybody, and um, we don't tell folks that that the only solution for them is to play a tour ball. There's there's really great solutions down in the middle of the market for folks to to be able to play a golf ball that really fits their game and, and is appropriate to their game. So and it is yeah, also we'll, packed we'll with technology. Absolutely, absolutely, and you know, like the E12, for example, is a is a softer compression ball. It's it's made to fly straight. So if you got a little bit of problem keeping the golf ball on the golf course, the E12 would be a good solution. It's a lower spinning ball off the tee, so it'll it'll give you a better chance of staying on the on the fairway. All right. So Dan, as the president of a major golf manufacturer equipment company, we're in really interesting times right now. Uh, not long <laughs> ago, the USGA and the RNA announced their intention to roll back technology, and that is in an environment where the game at what I call the 99.99% level is absolutely booming. So let me just start there. What it was the reaction, what is the reaction to, of Bridgestone Golf to the prospect of golf ball technology being rolled back, not just for the elite, but for all? Well, in, in a nutshell, we're opposed to, to that new ruling. Um, we, we sympathize with USGA. We have a great relationship with USGA. We have a long partnership with USGA, but on this one, we're we're not quite there with them. Uh, the game is booming. We don't really see um, a benefit to taking distance out of the recreational players' hands. Uh, so we we would prefer that not to be the case. Now, that being said, we are a company that follows rules. And if it comes to be that that rule actually happens, and I think we've got till 2028 to see if it does, um, you know, we'll, we'll certainly comply and make golf balls that, uh, that are conforming. Uh, but we'll also be very mindful as to what the consumer wants to do. And, you know, ultimately it's the consumer that's going to guide us as to where we all go. Yeah. And of course you have that much time where you have thousands and thou thousands of engineers from the tire side of the business into your guys under your roof that can come up with new technologies, perhaps to balance uh, where we're going with the game in that regard. Now to those points of the game booming, it's, it's, it's another really interesting place that we are. The 99.99% .99 is very healthy, really healthy. There's, there's different sections of the country, many sections where it's difficult to even get a tee time because the game is so popular, but the game at its highest tier where you'll be under the tree next week, talking to many of the people that, that are part of all this, uh, they're, they're trying to find themselves. They're searching any thoughts on that dichotomy between the contrast of the two halves. Well, it is. It's uh, it, it is a strange time, and we're we're all pretty much burned out and overloaded with all the news about who's doing what and who's defecting, who's not, and uh, you know, they're going to get together. They're not going to get together. Um, we've been a tour partner for many many years, and so we believe in a tour, the PGA Tour. We were a title sponsor of the uh, WGC Bridgestone Invitational for 13 years, and I was I was right in the middle of all that. And so we were, uh, you know, a signature event before the term signature event came along with the WGC event. And so, we, yeah, we've, we've, we're rooting for the industry, really, is what we're hoping to see the industry come back together. We think that the best thing for everybody is, is a unified professional tour. Um, so we hope that uh, everybody can work out their differences and, and figure this thing out. But more important to us is the way that we make a living and the way that we pay our bills is that we sell golf balls to Saturday morning golfers. And to your point, that part of the business is very, very healthy. And we're, we're thrilled that, uh, you know, just to give you a quick scenario, I've been in the business for about 30 years. And you think back on the time when Tiger came on the scene in 98, 99, and the industry uh, had a big jump start, And then that stayed, we stayed, kind of fat and happy for a long time, all the way up to the financial crisis of 08, 09. And then golf went through a long drought uh, from the financial crisis all the way up to when Tiger won the Masters in 2019. 
and then here we are at the at the height of uh, of a new uh, a new growth era for golf, and, and it, you know the numbers are great, participation's great. What well, we had 530 million rounds of golf being played in 2023. That's the highest ever, and so yeah, we're we're excited about the the, the health of the consumer game, and that's where we're going to keep our focus. Yeah, over $100 billion a year, folks, in uh, direct economic impact from the golf industry. It is a major economic engine in the United States, and they are a major contributor to everything on the golf equipment side of the game. Bridgestone Golf, Dan Murphy is the president. Earlier, he used the phrase that truth in the industry, that truth at that point context was about the importance of players getting fit for golf balls because it does matter to your performance log on to bridgestonegolf.com and you can check out everything that we have been discussing with dan murphy dan we're proud of you guys we thank you for what you guys have meant to the golf industry and you continue to thank you maddie it's great to be with you buddy we'll see you good Good to see you, too. Maybe I'll see you next week. Hope our paths cross. Okay, when we come back, folks, you're going to be hearing from someone that is making history right now, someone that has already won three starts in a row. Nellie Corder, right after these words. Stay with us. Relax. Easy now. Find your happy place. It's all in the hips. Just tap it in. Yes! Find the latest clubs and apparel at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses, all set alongside world-famous scenery. And visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. It screams. It tracks. It's soft. It reacts. It is the Bridgestone Tour B with a game-changing reactive cover. Designed to spring faster off your driver and stick longer to your wedges. Try Bridgestone's Tour Bs. The Tour Ball reinvented. The Gen 6 Iron is a culmination of everything that we have learned as a team. The absolute best golf club I have ever hit. It's something special. Say hello to the new PXG Gen 6 Iron. The longest, most accurate irons we've ever made. They go higher and farther than any iron that I have hit to date, and they're so easy to hit. Super excited for the consumer to try this. They're going to love them. PXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Baseball, nah. Football, done it. I think I'm going to go after the PGA Tour. Bo, you're going to need the right equipment company. I think I got that. You know Tour Edge backs all their clubs with a lifetime warranty. I know. They ship all their premium custom clubs in 48 hours. I know. All their premium clubs are hand-built in the USA. I know. You know Tour Edge has won 35 times out here. Guys, I know. Pound for pound, nothing comes close. Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship-caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern Lower Peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to boynegolf.com. Zero Friction introduces the Wheel Pro Push Cart Golf Bag with its revolutionary three in one design, supportive legs that spring into action, a comfort grip handle with three locking positions, accessories for the modern golfer enhanced by seven pockets for more storage, and removable all terrain wheels which slide right into place. The new Zero Friction Wheel Pro Golf Bag checks every box for every golfer. Push, carry, or cart. The decision is yours thanks to Zero Friction. Head to zerofriction.com today.
Uh, the golf course is amazing, an amazing condition, amazing facility. Um, yeah, we're, I feel like we're super lucky to get to play out here. Um, I played the back nine uh, yesterday and then the front nine today in the Pro-Am, and uh, it's a tough track. I know that the wind and the conditions aren't going to be the easiest this week, especially if and this golf course is going to get really tough in the wind as well. So um, definitely challenging, but... Um, the scenery is beautiful. Yeah, I'm super lucky to be a T-Mobile athlete. Um, I have a great relationship with them. They're super encouraging, super supportive, and for them to support and step to step up and support women's golf is really, really big and just makes me proud to represent them. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay very much so in the moment. Um, I feel like with sports and golf in general, you have so much time to think. So um, I think that staying in the moment is something that I try really hard to focus on. Um, but obviously with that being said, I'm super proud and of the, the events that I've played and the hard work that I've put in and the amount of work that my team and I have put in to get those victories. And um, But at the end of the day, you know, it's tough when you win first two out of three events in a row where you kind of can't um, kind of think about it too much. You can't have it. You have to process what you've done, but then you have to get ready for the next week. So I uh, had the day on Sunday afternoon, my five hour drive to process the win and then had to get ready already was on the golf course yesterday. I've had, I would say that every victory I've had or um, every single time I've played well, I felt more in the zone, but um, I would say that the past two weeks, everything has just kind of clicked a little bit more, even my mistakes. I've made the right mistakes in a sense. Um, and just playing really smart, um, just not taking too much risk on. Uh, but yeah, I feel like even in 21, I played really, really well. And I've had, even last year, I had little glimpses of me playing really well, but I just wasn't consistent enough to get the win. But overall, yeah, I think the past two weeks have just uh, clicked. Yeah, no, I uh, I try to stay. Very, I always am try to stay very, very present. I don't try to change my attitude for my majors as another regular LPGA tournament. I mean, the fields are usually just as strong in these events as they are in majors. You see pretty much the same girls every week. You play on amazing golf courses, so um, majors already have enough added pressure to them where I just don't try to change my mindset and I, I'm going to take every win and every good round. Yeah, just worry about stroke play. Um, three days of it. I know there's a cut after two days and then um, just eight girls get in. Um, so definitely going to have to play some solid golf. But yeah, taking it more as a stroke play event first and then, you know, hopefully get into the match play part of it. Yeah, I mean, getting to represent red, white, and blue has always been a huge honor. Um, every single time I've done it, I've been super proud of doing it. And you don't just play for yourself, you play for your country. And getting to do that on many stages as Solheim Cup, International Crown, Olympics has been so much fun. And hopefully, you know, I get the opportunity to do that again. Nelly Corda, let's get you up to speed on how and when you can see the coverage of the LPGA. There you see it. Wednesday, note please, 6 to 9 p.m. All these times are Eastern, Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. start, Saturday and Sunday at 6 p.m. on Golf Channel. The Augusta National Women's Amateur will be on Golf Channel today from 1.30 p.m. as well. How about the PGA Tour? The PGA Tour is Valero, Texas Open, Thursday and Friday from 4 p.m. again, Eastern time. Uh, Saturday from 1 on Golf Channel 3.30 on NBC and a similar schedule on Sunday from 1 on Golf Channel and 2.30 on NBC. Liv is in Miami. Uh, well, let me finish with the Valero Texas Open, first of all. The PGA Tour live coverage kicks off uh, tomorrow at 8.15 a.m., Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Remember, they have four different streams uh, covering the event. You can also hear PGA Tour radio if you subscribe to National Satellite Service or on the PGA Tour app or PGATour.com. Both of those latter are free and available around the world from 1 p.m. on Thursday and Friday on the weekend, Saturday at 3, Sunday at 1. As I was mentioning, Liv is in Miami. Coverage on Friday from 1 p.m. in the CW app, Saturday and Sunday from 1 p.m. 
on the CW. Now, Ludwig Oberg has had an incredible run. Now, this is a guy that has already won at every level that he has played. In 2024, in seven events, he has one runner-up finish. I'm going to give you the specifics in a second. Three top 10s, five top 25s. Cuts made, what would you expect? Seven of seven. As to those finishes, he was second at the AT&T Pebble Beach Pro-Am. At the Players' Championship, he was eighth. That was kind of a quiet eighth, wasn't it? Uh, at uh, the Farmers Insurance Open, he was a tie for ninth finish there. He spoke in advance of the Valero Texas Open, and he was asked about everything that I just went through there. How would he assess the season so far? It's been great. Um, you know, first off, I've been able to play these bigger events, which has been kind of my goal ever since I turned professional. Um, and so it's been nice to be able to test the waters um, doing so and um, felt like I've been playing pretty good. I haven't really put together four great rounds so far, I think, in, in these tournaments, but um, it's uh, something that I've been wanting to do and then something that I'll sure I'll just keep going and, and do that in the future. I feel like I play better and better the more I play um, up until a point where I get tired, basically. So it's it's always going to be a little bit of a balance, and, and I guess that's what I'm trying to figure out at this moment. Um, but I do feel like the more I play, um, I get into tournament mode a little quicker. Um, and, I'm, and I've been trying to use these off weeks a little bit better than I have in the past. Obviously, last year I didn't have that many off weeks. We just played, played, played. Um, but then this year it's been a little bit more, you know, I've been fortunate to be able to take a few weeks off. And um, what I want to do is I guess I want to improve – coming back after those off weeks a little bit sharper and being ready to play? Uh, I think so. I think it goes a little bit hand-in-hand with what I said in terms of I just keep playing better and better the more I play. Um, So hopefully that was one of the main reasons why um, I want to play uh, before my first major. Um, I feel like uh, that's that's the best for me. And and hopefully, you know, I have a long career ahead of me and I'm I'm just trying to figure these uh, things out as soon as I can. Um, it is uh, a lot of excitement. Um, it's uh, it's definitely going to be nerve wracking. It's definitely going to be nervous. Um, but I, uh, you know, the Masters is the Masters. We all know that, and uh, it's a tournament that I've I've watched ever since you know I started playing golf and all these things from from when I grew up. But it'll be it'll be nervous um, as as any other tournament basically. But. Obviously, my first major is going to be really special. I'll have a uh, close family. I'll have my girlfriend. I'll have some friends over as well. So I think we're all going to enjoy it and, uh, and just um, have a good week. I'll tell you what. He's, I think that he has everything to be such a superstar. I mean, he's already kind of doing it. What is he, Dob? 6'2". He's, he's got, like, the, the, the model good looks. It's gorgeous. More coming up in the Fairways of Life show right after these words. More sound coming in from players around the world of golf as well. Stay with us. I guess hello world, huh? (laughs) And with one subtle hello, Tiger began an amazing and unthinkable career. I've done it for 20 years now with, with Bridgestone. It allows me to play an aggressive style around the greens, and it's allowed me to win a lot of tournaments. Bridgestone Golf, proud to be part of your journey. Boyne Golf provides the ultimate world-class golf destination with 10 championship-caliber courses spanning three resorts. Centered in Michigan's northern Lower Peninsula, the courses are the products of some of the game's masters, including Robert Trent Jones Sr., Arthur Hills, and Donald Ross. From the all-inclusive vacation packages, elite instruction with the Boyne Golf Academy, tournaments, and so much more, Boyne Golf truly offers an unrivaled Michigan golf vacation experience. Just log on to BoyneGolf.com. I think when you're training for other sports or you're what why most people go to the gym is so that they can like have muscles and you know be strong and be healthy and a lot of the reason why they struggle to play golf is their body doesn't move properly for them to be able to hit a golf ball and when you're training for golf it's a little bit different because you're focused more on flexibility and mobility and being uh, strong in motion when you're able to kind of have a warm-up and have a workout routine and kind of gradually build up to where you're training your body to move properly yeah you're gonna get a lot of big dividends on the golf course Easy now. 
Find your happy place. It's all in the hips. Just tap it in. Yes! Find the latest clubs and apparel at Golf's Happy Place, the PGA Tour Superstore. What if we started a company and the company was under no time constraints, no financial constraints? The one constraint is their clubs had to be exceptional performers and much better than any other alternative. I was told time and again, it'll never work. It worked like a house of fire. And I'll tell you what, I think our customers love it. BXG, nobody makes golf clubs the way we do, period. Stride by Zero Friction, the first of its kind personal caddy. Walk in comfort and style with Stride's remote and follow me technology. The Stride handles almost any terrain and its 54 hole range will last all day. The lightweight design and removable front wheels makes it simple to handle. Plus it easily fits golf carts. Order yours and save. Visit zerofriction.com backslash stride or scan the QR code to order yours today. Stride, your personal caddy. Welcome back to Fairways of Life Show, folks. Pleasure to have your company. As you guys know, I get that the story on any given week, particularly weeks of majors, oftentimes the focus is on the golf course, and rightfully so, because it is a star, and that is definitely the case when we're talking about Augusta National. And, of course, we're focusing as much on the Masters as we are, as this will be the last time that we are together before the week of the Masters kicks off. Well, I had a chance to dig into some of the history of, of Augusta. And in what you're about to see in the American Civil War, it never would have gone the course that it ultimately did were it not for Augusta, Georgia. At the onset, the Confederacy was full of anticipation while planning to employ a strategy of outlasting the political will of the North to fight a war that would be long and cost a great deal. But with the Confederate attack on Fort Sumter on April 12, 1861, a new reality set in. With barely a month worth of gunpowder insured, the question of where the Confederacy would find massive amounts of gunpowder necessary to fight a large and extracted war became paramount. Jefferson Davis appointed former U.S. officer Major George Washington Raines of North Carolina to resolve this monumental and nearly impossible challenge. It was crucial because otherwise they had no um, way of getting gunpowder other than uh, barricade runners down on the coast to steal it from or you know, take boats and capture boats from the Union. That They had, they had a gunpowder plant up in the northeast and uh, so if without it, uh, it wouldn't have lasted as long as it did. Raines, a graduate of West Point, had extensive experience in engineering with knowledge of chemistry, geology, and mineralogy. He settled on building the Confederate powder works along the banks of the Augusta Canal, utilizing highly advanced engineering to build a facility from scratch. From the start to finish, they had it up and operating in uh, seven months. Raines constructed a series of 26 buildings that would eventually stretch for two miles along the Augusta Canal to accommodate the sequencing and production of gunpowder. With the canals as his means of transport, the facility was not only highly efficient, but huge. In fact, it was the largest single Confederate industrial project of the entire war. The refinery was the principal structure and modeled after London's House of Parliament, centered around a 150-foot tall chimney. The powder works was so efficient that at the end of the war, it had a surplus of 70,000 pounds of gunpowder. When the war ended, bricks from the powder works were used to construct a mill that stands to this day, although in disrepair, with the original chimney remaining as a reminder of what was. 
In the world of golf, Augusta is known for hosting the first major championship of the year and for some of the most dramatic moments in the history of the game. But I'm standing right now at the base of that massive chimney along its walls. And when you think about the fact that I'm literally touching the bricks from the Confederate Powder Works and the role that it played in the Civil War, the only thing that I can think of that's kind of blowing my mind is, gosh, if these walls could talk. All setting the table for what is to come. Don't forget what's to come today at 1.30 p.m. will be the Augusta National Women's Amateur on Golf Channel. So we've given you the names. Scotty Scheffler, Ludwig Oberg, Wyndham Clark, and Matthew Pavone. Based upon a whole set of criteria, more math than emotions, uh, are the four. But, Dom, I'm not changing. I know you're going to pressure me later on and say, am I going to change my pick? I'm not changing my pick. I had picked... Joaquin Neiman, what, two weeks ago? When, I don't forget when we, we had that conversation. It was a while ago, yes. I don't even remember who you yeah. picked because you were all over the place. You picked somebody, then you're like, change your mind, and you change the rules. Yeah, I, yeah I, 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 I reserve the right to change my mind until probably during the tournament. <laughs> until at the uh, 17th hole on Sunday, conclusion of the 17th hole on Sunday. So if at, at the risk of, of violating all of your unwritten rules, who – is your pick for the Masters as we enter the week? Brooks Kepka. Brooks, he says. See, I liked yesterday when Tripp was with us and he said John Rahm. And he, he, kind of, he kind of phrased it by saying, who plays great when he's angry? John Rahm. Little chip on his shoulder. That's what it is. That's what he actually said. Folks, thank you so much for your company today. Always a pleasure to spend part of the day with you. Until we are together again, be well. Goodbye for now.